less than 72, it's more derivatives. And these derivatives, it's not that they're difficult. It's just you have to get them memorized. You just have to, you know, know them. Um, and understanding, like, what the rule is. I don't see them as horribly see difficult. Them often after this? Often after this, you'll see, yeah, you'll see, you'll use them on a somewhat regular basis just because they'll want you to be learning them. Now, are they the ones that come up all the time in your problems? You know, not necessarily. I mean, your basic derivatives are what you'll really use. You know, like how we always have our power rule and, um, some of those, but these are good to know because that you know they randomly are going to come up. So, okay. so we have derivatives of three different things today. We have a to the x. So, in other words, when x is in the power, when x is in the power, it's not just bring the power down out front, and subtract one from the power. It's different when your variables in the power. Derivatives of logs and derivatives when there's absolute value are the three things we're looking at. So the absolute value is going to take a little processing, but the first two are more just learn and know the rules. And we're going to learn derivatives, and then the next lesson after the next test, we go and learn the integrals of several of them. So, Okay, first one, the derivative of a to the x. Realize a is a number. Okay, so this is a number raised to the x, kind of like 2 to the x, or 3 to the x, or 4 to the x. That's what we're doing the derivative of here. And the idea is if it's the derivative of a number raised to the x, then that derivative is a to the x still times the natural log of whatever the number is, a. Okay? So, of course, you have to watch out for the chain rule in all of these, like everything else. But So, derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. If your power of x is more than just an x, that's when our chain rule will come into play. Let's try it. Let f of x equals 17 to the x. Find f prime of x. What are you thinking? Yeah, so your a value is 17, yes. Nope, you'd leave it like that. I mean, unless... Will any of them ever ask for you to... No. Nope. And you want to, you know, you could put parentheses around the natural log of 17. You could write it in this order, or you could flip-flop your order there and say it's the natural log of 17 <laughs> times 17 to the x. Honestly, it doesn't matter. It's probably just easy to leave it as you come up with it the first time. But just, you know, for future reference. Got it? Okay, problem two. If y equals 42 to the x squared minus 5x, what is dy dx? So we have a number base, and we have x in the power. Thoughts on where to start? The first half of the equation just stay as the 42 to the x squared minus 5x, or can it nope. also be x? Nope, it stays. So, yeah, when I say the derivative of a to the x, I guess maybe I should have said the derivative of a to some power is a to some power times the natural log of a. So, this is the derivative of 42 to some power. So, it's still going to be. 42 to some power, so that x squared minus 5x times, now it's the natural log of a, so in this case it's the natural log of 42. And then what's different about this one? Yeah, the x squared minus 5x is not just an x. So technically when it was just an x, the derivative of x is 1, so we don't have to worry about this one. But this one, we have to think, what's the derivative of x squared minus 5x? So what's the derivative of x squared minus 5x? 2x minus 5. I'll put that in parentheses over there. So those are your pieces. Um, 
There's no nice, pretty way to write this. There just isn't. Uh, it looks like I put my 42 to some power at the end for my final answer. I don't know that you'd have to, though. So I put natural log of 42 times 2x minus 5, which that 2x minus 5 has to be in parentheses, and then times 42 to the x squared minus 5x. Yes, I could do that because I'm writing off the screen, aren't I? I guess I can't do that. <laughs>